I gave my plug five bands counterfeit. So this is a story about my worst Airbnb guest ever. All right, so back in July, there was this guy that reached out to me. And his name was Corey at the time, but then it changed to Germany, and then it changed to Tom. So already there's a hint for how weird this is going to get. So when he initially reached out to me, he said it was just going to be him and a couple people. They're coming into Dallas. They just need a place to crash. And so that's totally normal. Most of the people that reach out to me say something like that, unless it's some kind of big event. So of course, I approved him. We're all good. And then I made sure to drive the point home because my Airbnb is a little unique. It's big. It's two stories. It has four bedrooms. It, a lot of people use it for events. So I said, hey, just heads up. There is $25 per person if you throw a large event. He's like, don't worry. We're cool. It's all good. All right, good. Everything's fine. No problems. So a few days before the booking, he reached out to me and let me know this is going to be a rap video. And I did not know that, which made things a little more complicated. That normally creates a higher risk scenario. And so I made sure to let him know. And I was like, all right, cool. If it's a rap video, just make sure to protect the property. Don't trash it. Don't piss off my neighbors. And then keep the music down. And so he said he definitely will do that. And <laughs> also the fact that there's going to be 70 people coming alarm me. I was like, okay, 70 people. That's a crazy music video. That's like Project X status. And so I want to make sure to clarify that it's $25 per person over 16. Now, I already mentioned in the past, you gotta check the requirements to come to the listing. He obviously didn't, and so he freaked out. He was like, yo man, I can't afford $25 per person. That's $1,350. That's an extra $1,300 above the $699 I'm already paying. And I was like, hey man, this is your decision to have a rap video here, not mine. This is the house rules. It's listed. I brought it up. I even have a premeditated like message that before you book, you have to actually clarify that you did read these rules just to protect myself. And he's like, yeah, I didn't actually pay attention to that. And I was like, well, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's that's how much it's going to be. So he's like, okay, plans changed. I'm actually not going to have anybody there. We're not even going to stay there. We're going to stay at another place because the cost for me to cancel, it's going to be too much. So we're just going to go ahead and pay it as it is. And then we're not going to have anybody even show up to the property. We're just going to have it empty. Congratulations. You get an extra $700 for nothing. And at that point, I wish that I was dumb enough to truly believe him, but I knew that I was like, mm hmm. So you just had everyone fly into Dallas. You have all these producers, all these models. You organize the entire event with my address. And then a day out, two days out, you're just going to straight up move everything to another property. I bet. And so, first thing I did, which first thing anybody should do, is then immediately call Airbnb and say, hey, heads up, huge risk here. I really am sure there's going to be a massive party and I want to give you a heads up that this could be dirty. Like what would you recommend I do? Airbnb in this case was like, well, he said in the messages he's not going to have a party and so all we can do is really trust him. I'm like, you obviously don't know how people work because this is going to go down and we have to be prepared for it. What's the game plan? What's the strategy? What do we do? And Airbnb is like, well, you can either cancel and he gets a full refund or uh, you just take him at his word and hope for the best. I'm like, okay, well, it's two days away. I'm not going to cancel. It's on a Saturday and that's like my money making days. And so I'm not going to just throw away $700. So I'm going to go ahead and trust him at his word and hope for the best which I knew wasn't going to work out in the end, but I was optimistic. So the day comes and around eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I was curious, like, what's the rap video going to look like? And so I check my security cameras and I see everyone like smoking bongs and smoking joints and drinking out of handles and bottles and just people dancing around all acting crazy. And I was like, okay, well, to each his own. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But if things get out of control, all that illegal drug use on my property can really put me in a bad situation if the cops come out. And needless to say, things got a little crazy. By 12 o'clock, there was 70 to 80 people. We can only really count on the cameras, about 70. And so the place was full of people, wiling out, breaking stuff. You can see people breaking things and putting holes in walls and stomping up and down and breaking my actual flooring of my house. People moving furniture around, scratching it, dancing. There was all sorts of crazy stuff going on. And at 12 o'clock, the police did show up. 
And so at 12 o'clock, the cops came. You saw this like massive exodus of everybody. Everyone started running out of the house. It was kind of entertaining to be completely honest, watching the security cameras. And then uh, having these drunk people talking to the cops, that was pretty interesting as well. And then I thought that would be the end of it. And then we'll just have to assess the situation in the morning and hopefully things aren't as bad as it looked on the cameras. Two o'clock rolls around, I guess because the bars got out, I guess all the producers and whatever said that that's where the after party is going to be. And then you get another flood of a whole bunch of new people. Like we're talking about another 70 something people show up. And I'm like sitting there watching the video. This is me sitting in my bed at 2 a.m. at night just being like, oh my dear God, my neighbors are going to hate me. And so I just start counting one after the other, one after the other. I'm messaging the dude on Airbnb. I'm calling the guy and be like, yo, man, you need to chill out. You need to stop doing this because my, my neighbors are calling me and texting me. You got to stop. So I'm sitting here like trying to get ready and I'm about to drive over to the property and deal with it myself. And then here comes the cops. Cops come out for the second time and they try to bust into the house this time around. And I'm sitting here watching this whole thing go down on my, my security camera, knowing all the weed that's in there. And they you see guns in the house. And I'm like, oh boy, I'm going to lose my Airbnb listing. I'm going to get like fined, all sorts of stuff from the cops. Like I'm screwed. And so I was stressing out that night. And uh, I, needless to say, I was really upset at Corey because I was like, or whoever this guy is, we'll call him Corey because he just totally lied to me and he totally took advantage of my property and he just destroyed it. And so aftermath, next day, went to the property and it was trashed. I have this thing where if you don't leave the property exactly how you find, found it, then you have to pay for a deep clean. And the cleaners came the next day and they're like, yo, we can't, we don't know what to do with this because we had another client coming in later on at like four o'clock and the house was like, what like a frat house if you ever went to school or uh, college and you ever went to a frat party the next day just trash bags everywhere beer cans everywhere the floors were sticky like every time you try to put your feet like mm, just everything was trash and i was like oh my god what are we gonna do so my property manager myself my cleaning crew and we hired an extra two cleaners as well to come in and just try to get the property all together and ready to go for the next guests coming in at four it was a mess. Needless to say, Corey went MIA after this, never heard from him again, and denied the entire thing. So how do we take care of this? How do we turn this horrible scenario, which is kind of entertaining, but also horrible scenario, and it destroyed my property into a win? So that's where Josh comes in. And he did a beautiful job staying consistent and really making this total foul ball into a home run. Okay, so the first thing we did, slash we as in actually just Josh, Josh is my property manager and I put him on the task of like completely annoying the hell out of Airbnb. And if he didn't stay so consistent and follow up consistently, this would have never happened. But in the end, the payout was worth it. So here's what we did. Immediately right afterwards, we took as many pictures as possible. We went to the security camera and we can't submit video footage to Airbnb, so we just snapshotted a whole bunch of stuff. He made a folder named Corey Dumb. <laughs> that's not what I named it, that's what he named it. And then he put all the, the pictures of all the security cameras and then he highlighted every single person that was there and then did like a number, like a head count. So overall, we had documented evidence of it showing that there was like 67 people. One second. Josh, how many people? Uh, 64. 64. So it ended up being 64 people. And we had all the video evidence, photo evidence to prove it. On top of that, we used any of the video footage to show any of the damage as well. So them moving and scratching up all the furniture, putting holes in the walls, destroying anything, the baseboards, all the stuff that we could possibly do, we sent it all into Airbnb. And we said, this is what happened, this is how much it cost, and then this is what we're going to need to replace all the stuff and then even replace the flooring. Now the trick is, is that the flooring is like 100 years old and so you can't really replace the flooring. You can't switch out some pieces and find like for like. It's just impossible. So we have to literally rip up the entire floor of the Airbnb for it to get back to normal. Because what happens when they're dancing, it's a pier and beam. For those of you who don't know about real estate, there's slab and there's pier and beam. Slab, you basically put a whole bunch of concrete and you build the house on top of that. Whereas as pier and beam is you basically put a whole bunch of slats of wood, then you put wood over those slats of wood, and then that's kind of how you build your house. And so when they're jumping, they're jumping up and down, cracking all the boards, 
And then for the next guest that comes in, like we had to put rugs and all sorts of like hazard signs and stuff because if you walked on it, you'd literally fall through and die. And so we didn't want that to happen. So what Josh did is he sent all these things into what's called the Airbnb Resolution Center. And then they put a case manager on us. And so we would constantly follow up and say, hey, this is how much it's gonna cost to fix. Can you please send the Airbnb payout through the guest? So they reached out to Corey. Corey, of course, went MIA, never heard from him again. Then, like I said, he changed his name to Germany, and they sent another request, and he changed his name to Tom, and then they basically just had to kick him off the platform because I didn't know this, but there is no real recourse. Like, if we say we need $14,000 to cover our stuff, hey, Airbnb, uh, can you take care of it? Airbnb goes to him, and he says no, then they're, okay, there's no recourse, and so they just kick him off the app. Then he can just use someone else's log in and then there's that's it I mean I, I don't know that's a loophole in the system that we have to fix but I digress so so it turns out the Airbnb couldn't give them to pay so now they're having to pay so they are now at this point becoming super unresponsive they don't return any of our emails and then we had to constantly follow up then we had to call and sit on wait forever just to get them on the line to talk about the email they weren't uh, they weren't responding to then after the phone call, they would close our case out, and then we would see, get an email saying that your case is closed, and we appreciate you responding or coming, uh, mentioning this to Airbnb. We hope you resolve it, and then um, and then they constantly. Then we had a call to reopen it, and they close it, reopen it, close it. So about two months back and forth, back and forth, they sent an insurance adjuster to come out, and then that's finally when we made some headway. The insurance adjuster came out, looked at all the things they damaged. This is two months of having guests with all these damages. And he said, yeah, it looks like about $14,000 worth of damage. And that's whenever we kind of looked at each other, Josh and I were like, oh my God, I can't believe we might actually get paid $14,000 for this. I, we thought it was just like a fairy tale. And then had to follow up over and over again, the close case, reopen it, close case, reopen it. And eventually they paid us out. They paid us out $14,000 for all the renovations that need to be done for the house and all the guests that came. So in the end, we ended up getting our due, but it took two months of back and forth phone calls and emails nonstop to get it done. So what can you do to avoid the stress that I had to deal with and potentially having a way bigger situation on your hands than what I did? First thing is that you gotta be able to identify BS as soon as you see it. And so I knew based on the communication I was getting with the guests at the time that some things just weren't adding up. And I, uh, I notified Airbnb ASAP as soon as I saw some, some weird things going on. Secondly, I had a camera system. That camera system saved the day. With that camera, it changed everything. I had video proof, I had images, I was able to really state my case and show everything that possibly would have happened in the house. If I didn't have that, I would have been screwed. Third is I got to the property the next day as soon as the guest left. Why is this important? Because you have to take uh, picture evidence as soon as the guest leaves before the next guest arrives. That way you can't have anybody say, well that wasn't me, that was the next guest. So as soon as you know that there was a problem guest, get there ASAP and take as much evidence as you can. Four, when you go to Airbnb Resolution Center, make sure to do it ASAP and come to them with all your evidence up front. You wanna snapshot all the conversations you had with the guest, ooh, bonus as well. Keep it all in Airbnb platform because they can actually go through and research it. Do never call or text your Airbnb guest. If they call or text you, then all you gotta say to them is, make sure to respond to me in the Airbnb app because that creates a paper trail that you can use later in case anything bad happens. And so after you have all the pictures and the conversations and everything all listed, if you have receipts, the stuff they broke, if you send snapshots of the receipts, you take pictures of all the damages, everything, then you take it all to the Airbnb Resolution Center, you state your case and you send it to them for them to review, and then you don't stop following up. You follow up every single day if you can, if not every other day, and see the progress. Five, don't give up. Airbnb is gonna do their best to get you to give up. They're gonna say that they can't pay out and so we apologize, the guest isn't gonna pay so you're kind of screwed. And then it's up to you to say, no I'm not, you can pay, I know you can pay. Send an adjuster out. They're gonna do everything they can to take as much risk off of them and to pay out as little as possible. But you have to stay really strong and say, no, I know this is wrong 
and I know my rights, you need to pay up. I have all the evidence, this isn't speculation, I have hard proof by your policies, then you need to pay me. And as long as you consistently stay with that firm, strong attitude, and you come with evidence, not just thoughts and ideas, your security cameras, like I said, are gonna save the day, then you will in the end win. You just have to stay persistent. Even when they close the case, tell them to reopen it. And even when they send the wrong adjuster out there, send another adjuster. Whatever it is, don't give up. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this really long video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like the format of this video and you like the storytelling kind of aspect, then I'm more than happy to tell more stories. I have hundreds of them of all sorts of weird situations that happen on Airbnb, good and bad. And so if this video hits like, let's say for instance, let's set the bar really low. If this video hits like 100 views and we'll do another story time like this again. If it doesn't, then whatever. Hopefully whoever watched this enjoyed it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Make sure to check me out on Instagram if you don't already have me for my daily content and behind-the-scenes stuff. All right, guys, see ya.